guys and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sada. I have a 20 month old son named Suleiman and I'm expecting baby number two who is also a boy. And today is not going as planned which makes it the perfect day to film this video which is the items I regret buying. Now, as a first time mom, you're gonna be told to buy a lot of things and a lot of these items you don't need. You really really don't need or they are not as great as they're hyped up to be so if you like these types of videos please be sure to hit up that like comment below if you disagree with any of the items that I listed and why or if you agree with me also let me know in the comments I want to hear from you guys as much as possible and if you haven't already subscribed I will be uploading every week I'm actually thinking to do twice a week which I'll talk more about at the end of the video regarding bump dates and all of that so without further ado let's get into this list all right, so the first item is the pudge tub. We bought the pudge tub, which I'll show a picture of here. I don't have it with me right now, it's in storage. But the problem with pudge tub is it didn't fit the sink. This, but it said that it would have fit the sink that I have. I was gonna bathe my son ideally in the kitchen sink, which would have been nice, but the pudge tub itself is like a rubbery silicone material, and my son hated 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 the feeling of that against his skin and I used to line it up with like uh, towels to make it as soft as possible and he was not about that feeling at all so I don't like the pudge tub it ended up costing I think six or eight dollars some of these items by the way were registered for so if you purchase these items I'm so sorry that I made you purchase these for me but the pudge tub was definitely on that list because it just didn't fit my son was super uncomfortable in it and you couldn't really keep water in it so when you have the water running especially in my sink the water temperature doesn't stay consistent so I had to really keep an eye with a thermometer on that item number two is a non-contact thermometer which I actually still have with me here we call this now the beep beep and my son plays with it because uh, yeah <laughs> the beep beep it is not a reliable way to take your child's temperature. I thought that a non-contact thermometer would be absolutely ideal with a young child because I know they don't tend to sit still. This won't work because your child won't sit still. It also isn't as accurate, so sometimes it might say that your kid doesn't have a fever, but they do have a fever, or that they do have a fever, but they don't have a fever. So. I don't recommend a non-contact thermometer. Don't waste your money on this. They're also more expensive and they need a lot of battery changes, so it's just a useless toy now. I would not recommend a non-contact thermometer to anybody. The next item I'm gonna talk about, any hygiene kit, any of those giant kits that seem to include everything, they're not that good. They seem like they have a good value for your buck, but the items within them are usually really cheap. They're plastic, they tend to break easily, and most of the items within it you don't actually use, or there's something better that you can use in, in replace of that. I also think that the other items it came with, it had like um, thermometer sleeves. It came with a thermometer. The thermometer was very slow and inaccurate, so I wouldn't recommend it. Just generally, I don't recommend a hygiene kit. I think the best thing to do is to get the specific item that you're going to use, like the nail clipper or nail file, and to buy an item that you feel is of good quality because the ones that come in the hygiene kits are cheap, very, very cheaply made. And so they won't last and it's a waste of money because you're gonna end up replacing those items. Now this one is a big one and a lot of people love this item and I don't know why people love it, but it's the Diaper Genie. I still have it, I am looking to replace it because I don't actually buy the refills anymore which is the reason I hate them so much. First of all, the refills cost an arm and a leg. If you are buying refills for this thing, it claims that it can hold 250 diapers uh, per refill that you're buying for uh, a stack of four, uh, three or four. If you buy the brand, it's three. If you buy the no name, it's four. The Diaper Genie itself, we just bought the standard one. We got it on sale for $40 and it was the worst $40 I've ever spent. I think that you could just literally buy any garbage pail and just put some baking soda at the bottom of it and it will do the same job <laughs> as a diaper genie. The diaper genie also tends to get stuck a lot and when you're ripping the bags out, um, the thing that cuts it can cut you, which my husband has had happen to him. It is not the safest item, but it is not worth the money at all. I can't recommend it. I know some people swear by it and they think it's the greatest thing, but I don't see the hype, I don't think it's worth it, but any garbage can 
it will be just as good as the diaper genie if not better and it'll look nicer. I totally fell for the hype on this one. I thought it was gonna be amazing. The number one thing that I was worried about was SIDS. It definitely was a worry for me, so I fell for the hype of ding, 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 this little thing. This very little expensive, expensive thing that my friends purchased for my registry. Thank you guys. I'm so sorry that I didn't end up liking or using this in the end. And what happened was it wouldn't work, so we would, my son was born late preterm, we bought the preemie sock, it did fit him, but what would happen is he would get the compression marks on his feet because this is a contact breathing uh, monitor. So it would go around his foot and leave uh, a mark, which he was very unhappy about. We even tried to loosen it and use the new outlet sock because we got um, the new sock when it came out. This is the older version, we ordered all the new, um, sock materials for this sock because we were told that the old one left marks the new one does as well so we would put on the new sock and it would leave a bit of a compression mark but at the same time it doesn't pick up breathing if your baby is wiggling what baby doesn't wiggle i'm sorry Alec. he was obviously wiggling a lot so it would keep going off and saying that he's not breathing when he was definitely breathing and then it kept having connection errors where the base station was not reaching the sock. So it kept saying disconnected. I ordered a new sensor, paid out of pocket for that, didn't fix the problem. I went through all their customer service and they didn't fix this with me at all. So I'm not happy with the outlet. I would not recommend it to anyone. I do have something better than the outlet. There are much better non-contact devices that work and they have cameras. The outlet does now have a camera which you have to buy additionally to the sock. I don't recommend the outlet. YouTube made me fall for that one. Okay, the next one is another popular one and I know people are gonna probably argue with me on this one, but I exclusively pumped for 13 months. So if there's anything I know, it's pumps. The Medela. I hate the Medela. I really, really regret buying it. I think it's the biggest waste of money because the only hospital grade Medela is the Symphony, which is over $1,000. Most people buy the Pump and Style uh, Advanced or they buy the Swing. Both are garbage because they're not, um, I think the Sonata is a closed system, but the uh, Pump and Style Advanced that I had was not a closed system. So what would happen is the milk would go into the tubing and it would create mold and it would always be wet and it's very hard to dry this thing. So it's an extra process of washing the tubing. It's an extra process of washing all the little parts because there's so many little parts that come with a Medela. And they're all cheap, cheap parts. Like this plastic is, it's super bendable. It's not good quality at all. And the reason that's an issue is, let's say you're pumping along, it's like 3 a.m. at night and you're exhausted and you're pumping and this thing is pump, 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 pump because the suction is literally like, yanking you it's very painful i don't recommend again the medela for that reason as well but you're pumping along as this is doing that it's slowly loosening oh your milk spilled and anyone who says don't cry over spilled milk has never breastfed oh, the last straw for me that made me switch from Medela, the medela pump at 3 a.m i think i was eight weeks in i switched from the medela pump to winner the Spectra pump. Like I exclusively pumped, I can tell you this is very, very poor quality versus the Spectra, which is a hospital grade closed pump system. It is so much easier to clean. The bottles are not this flimsy and it lasted me for 13 months to exclusively pump for my son. And the annoying thing about the Medela also is that you see here, this these membranes, these membranes attach here. And they are very flimsy, they rip easily, and you have to replace them far more often than you do with the spectrum membrane. So <laughs> that's a little side tangent there, but if you've ever spilled milk or you've just struggled with breastfeeding, there's a lot of emotion with that. The Medela made me hate it. And on the same um, note, I just want to mention lanolin. Lanolin does not actually help for me, and I don't know I know some people swear by it, but it just feels so sticky. It's kind of like honey. I don't think it actually moisturized or prevented any damage there. The best thing is an Apno uh, all-purpose nipple ointment. It's way better. I would not recommend lanolin. You can see I went through this trying 
my best to make it work and it didn't work. On the same note of Medela, Medela, I'm sorry, I'm coming after you so hard on this video. The Calma bottle, which I did not end up keeping. The Calma bottle is meant to mimic the breast. It's supposed to be similar to breastfeeding. My son did not do well on that, so I really regret spending money on that. It's about $20 or so per bottle or just for the nipple head. And it was just too fast and my son could not coordinate with that bottle. We ended up going with the Dr. Brown's Wide Neck Slow Flow Anti-Colic Bottles. Long name, best bottle on the market, hands down. I love that bottle. It was so much easier for my son to drink. It helped with his colic, it helped with his reflux. Best bottle. The Calma bottle was confusing for him. It was too fast and it actually added to the nipple confusion, which led to the exclusive pumping. So the eighth item on my list is also nursing related. It's nursing bras. I would recommend buying nursing bras after you've had your baby and after you've established breastfeeding or as you're establishing breastfeeding. Don't buy a whole pile of nursing bras expecting that you're just going to breastfeed because then you've wasted a lot of money on nursing bras and you might not breastfeed. I ended up pumping and needing more pumping bras, not nursing bras. The nursing bras I initially bought were too small. Um, I recommend getting sized and then even buying a size up as you're getting ready to breastfeed. Maybe buy two, three uh, nursing bras at most. And then once you've really gotten into the swing of breastfeeding, invest as you please. Same notion of stockpiling, diaper stockpiles. You don't know which diaper is gonna work with your baby until you have your baby. And I know like it's really trendy right now to do those diaper parties, especially for the guys. I would rather collect diaper coupons and ask for diaper samples, like just a small pack to see what fits your baby and what doesn't make them react. Some babies have eczema. You don't know if your baby's gonna react to a certain type of diaper. A lot of people were telling me about the Pampers diapers and I was looking forward to using Pampers and then my son didn't do well with them and I didn't really know why. And then I, size one, I switched to the Huggy Snug and Dry and he's been on them ever since. To each their own, I think that a diaper stockpile is a big waste of money and you could easily end up buying diapers that don't fit your baby. If you guys agree or disagree with any of the items I mentioned, please let me know below. I'm also gonna add some honorable mentions here of the items that I didn't buy and I'm glad I didn't buy because I definitely realized that I don't need them after not purchasing them and I'm glad that I didn't. Until then, please be sure that you like this video. If you did like it, comment below and let me know what you think. Would you buy certain items? Have you bought certain items? Are you considering any of these items? Let me know. And subscribe, have your education bell turned on because I will be uploading more regularly. I'm planning to upload bump dates on Tuesdays, so if you like those, be sure that you're around for that. Until then, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.